You know, I am gonna have a taste, I don't care. All right, I'm eating the ugly one. <laughs> Can we just cut to like the end part where I eat? Hi, I'm Rick and welcome to another episode of Sweet Heat. In this show, everything that I make is a little bit sweet and a little bit spicy. Today, I'm really excited because I'm making one of my favorite dishes that I've had actually uh, in several places along the uh, the Pacific coast in Mexico, coconut shrimp. It's really incredible. There are so many coconut farms all along the Pacific coast here in Mexico, and the camarones here are incredible. So I went to the market this morning and I picked up these little babies. They're probably about two or three hours out of the ocean. They're so incredibly fresh. They're so incredibly delicious. So the sweet in this dish is going to come from the coconut also I'm making a pineapple salsa to go with it, and the heat is going to come from these beautiful habaneros. I really love them because I think they have a really floral, fruity flavor, and also they're super, super hot, but they pair really well with pineapple. And so this whole combination of pineapple and coconut and shrimp is just so incredibly tropical. It's what I love to eat here, so that's what we're gonna be making today. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start the salsa. So this is kind of a hybrid between a spicy pineapple jam and a really thick, slow cooked uh, salsa. I like it because what we're gonna do is we're gonna concentrate all the flavors of the pineapple. So it's gonna get sweeter, it's gonna get slightly caramelly, but we're gonna have the onion and the garlic and the habanero to cut the sweetness. So the first thing we're gonna do is trim the pineapples. So I'm gonna cut this in half. I'm only gonna use half of the pineapple. Um, I can have the rest for breakfast. And now I'm just going to take the skin off. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna core it. Just take your sharp chef's knife and cut down and remove the core. And then I have a pretty good blender, so I'm just going to roughly cut this. It smells so good. And actually, I'm gonna taste it because I love pineapple. Mm. Mm. All right, now I'm going to trim up my onion. I am using a white onion, which is pretty common here in Mexico. Use, uh, you can use yellow onion. You could, you could actually use scallion if you wanna do that or spring onion. I'm gonna use a quarter of this onion. These onions are a little bit sharper than yellow onions, um, and I just like the flavor. Uh, and they're typically the onions that you would find in any salsa or any recipe here in Mexico. I'm gonna use one large garlic clove. I feel like the garlic and the onion uh, in all salsas pull them into salsa land. I think, especially because I, I really like obviously, like sweet salsas. So any salsas made with fruits, like mangoes or pineapples or kiwi. But what can end up happening is if you don't have something like an onion or a garlic in there, it'll start to read too jammy and too fruit-like and it won't read as a salsa. So I've got a really beautiful habanero. I'm gonna go ahead and put gloves on just to make sure that I don't burn my eyes later <laughs> or my face or my arm or anything else. And like I said, they're, they're very fruity, they're very floral, they are very, very hot. If you're not into heat, you don't have to use it. Or if you wanna try the flavor, but not all of the heat, you can just use half of it. So I'm writing a, a regional Mexican cookbook right now, and I was very adamant that I did not want any special equipment necessary for this book. The only thing that I think you absolutely need is a blender. Uh, to me, it is like the quintessential piece of equipment for Mexican cooking because I make the salsas in it, I make guisos in it, I make everything in it. And to me, it's just like super easy. So everything goes into the blender. And if you are having trouble finding a good pineapple, which is, is a real thing, you can actually get away with a pretty crappy pineapple in this recipe because you're gonna slow cook it. And so whatever latent flavor is hidden in there will actually come out as it cooks. And then you may just have to season it a little bit at the end. So you might have to add a little bit more sugar or a little bit of lime juice. Okay, so lid goes on. 
And then as with anything I blend, I always start off really, really low and then go up only to medium low. Whenever you're making a salsa or, or any kind of a, a Mexican sauce, you don't wanna like go up to full speed or else you'll incorporate a lot of air into it and then it'll actually start to to have that flavor and texture of a smoothie and not an actual sauce or salsa. Okay, cool. I don't need it to be super smooth because I like the texture. Also, I really like seeing the, um, the orange bits of the avenetta in there. And also I like having a little bit of texture I think is gonna be really, really nice. Okay, so and now all we need to do is put it in a pan and cook it. So I'm going to transfer this to a saucepan and we're just gonna put this on a medium low flame and let it go for about 45 minutes to an hour. It'll get nice and thick and caramelly. So I have to admit something, I hate cleaning shrimp. I love shrimp so much and I actually have to remind myself how much I love shrimp as I'm doing this. And the, the reason I'm not grossed out by it at all, it just takes so long. That's the main reason why I hate it. But as I said, it's totally worth it because they're so incredibly delicious. And the shrimp here, there's an extra step because they're always, since they're fresh, obviously they still have the head. Um, so it's one extra little step, but again, worth it. It just takes a little while. So the first thing that I always do is just take off the head. And to do that, you literally just pop it off and oh, that, that was super gross. <laughs> I didn't even see that and I know that that's like really disgusting. But anyway, if you wanna. <laughs> I've never seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now what I like to do is peel the shells off and also the little, little legs. I'm gonna keep the tail on. I thought about uh, taking the tail off, but the tail is a little, a, a really good handle. I mean, you sacrifice a little bit of the, the shrimp meat uh, by leaving the tail on, but there's something very pleasant, I think, visually about seeing the tail. Okay, so now what I normally do, you can see the vein in there. In this case, I'm gonna take the top vein and the bottom vein out because I want the shrimp to open up on both sides so that I can fit a little bit more coconut into those cracks and crevices. That is your cleaned shrimp. So this looks good. So you can see it's really, really dry. It's really, really thick. That's exactly what we want. Okay, so I have a little bit of a secret ingredient. It's really not really a secret ingredient, but I wanted to amp up the coconut flavor. So this is again, a little bit extra and it might also be a little bit more expensive, but uh, if you can afford it, if you have it in your pantry, great, use it. Uh, I'm using coconut oils. If you use vegetable oil, it'll be just as delicious. You're just gonna get a little bit more coconut flavor with the coconut oil. Okay, so I've got my breading station. What I'm gonna do now is season the shrimp. So I'm going to put some salt in there. That's a teaspoon of kosher salt. I'm gonna put some freshly ground black pepper. And one other ingredient that I really like a lot that's used pretty commonly throughout Mexico is ground allspice. I feel like it smells, to me, it smells really, really tropical. It's just going to give it a nice little edge, which I really like. And it'll cut through some of the, the heat of the habanero as well. So I'm just gonna give that a little toss. So my breading station, what I have going on here, I have just plain all-purpose flour. I have two eggs beaten with a little bit of water and I have sweetened coconut. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a beautiful shrimp and I'm just gonna dredge it in the flour. Make sure you get into all the nooks and crannies and then just shake off the excess and then dip in the egg. The egg is really the glue in the situation, but I don't want it to be really drippy wet because then what'll end up happening is the coconut will start to clump up. So I wanna make sure I get all the excess egg off. And then once it's not dripping anymore, 
I will lay it into the coconut and then just pile coconut around it because I want it to stick all over. All right, and then shake, give it a little tap, make sure you tap off any excess coconut because any excess coconut that uh, doesn't fall back into the plate is gonna fall into your oil and then it'll start to burn after a while. So I wanna make sure that all the coconut that's on the shrimp is staying on the shrimp. And that is one breaded coconut shrimp. All right, so I've heated the oil to 325 degrees. I'm only gonna fry a few at a time, so I'm probably gonna put maybe five or six in here. I'll do six because they're gonna go really fast. They are only gonna take about two minutes. They're gonna cook on all sides, and then when they float to the top, they'll be nice and golden brown, and then I'll pull them out. And I've got a paper towel lined sheet tray. This is gonna be my landing pad. Yep, they're done. Oh. And just be careful when you bring them out because you don't wanna break off any of the coconut. I'm so excited about this, which I think I say every episode, but whatever. It would be sad if I wasn't excited about my own food. <laughs> So I'm gonna blow through this part really quick because I want to start eating shrimp. So we're just gonna finish the salsa. I didn't season in the beginning because the first time I made this dish, uh, I added salt in the beginning and then it reduced down and it was ever so slightly too salty. So I think it's better to season at the end. And then if, it's, uh, if it needs a little more salt, you can always add more. It's better to err on the side of putting less salt than it is putting too much salt. So I'm just gonna stir that in. I'm gonna add a little bit of the mandarin zest. Use oranges, but it's, it's also citrus season, so if you find blood oranges or you could use grapefruit, it's gonna just lift it up and taste even that much better. And it's pretty thick right now, and so it's not really the consistency of a dip. So I'm going to thin it out with a little bit of the mandarin juice. I also tasted it before, and it probably needs a little bit of extra sweetness to make it pop. And so instead of using sugar, I'm gonna use the juice, which is gonna be ridiculously sweet. Also, look at that, that's amazing. Um, okay, I'm gonna use my hand to catch the seeds because I don't want seeds in there. And probably about a tablespoon to two tablespoons, depending on how thick it is how thin you want it to be, and also how sweet you want it to be at the end. I obviously like a lot of sweet, so I'm okay if it thins out quite a bit. All right, so I'm gonna give this a taste. Mmm, mmm, wow. Oh my God. Mm, sweet, sour, salty, spicy, all the things. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna add more mandarin. So it needs to be thinned out a little bit more, but also there's a lot of sweet in there that I like. And I'm going to save the rest of that mandarin because I am going to eat that after this is over, after I've filled myself with shrimp. So now I'm gonna give myself a little serving bowl. Yep. What is that? This will be my dipping bowl. This salsa would also be great on fish tacos or shrimp tacos. Actually, you could put these uh, shrimp in a taco or in a tortilla and that would be really, really incredible. Okay, now we're gonna plate. Oh my God, I'm so hungry. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna throw a bunch of shrimp on this plate because I'm hungry and it's time for me to eat and all the things. Okay. I love how crispy it is. It's been a few minutes since it came out of the fryer. And it's really, really crispy. Mm. I almost feel like the, the shrimp itself is really, really sweet. It's just like one really nice coconut, the allspice is in there, but you can't really tell that it's there. It actually just makes the coconut taste more coconutty. 
And then that toasted coconut flavor with the coconut oil. There's just like so many layers of flavor. It's so good. Okay. But with this, I'm gonna put a bunch on there because I like heat. Mm. I kind of want to cry. <laughs> the acid from the pineapple and also from the mandarin cuts through the sweetness of the shrimp. And then you get like that, that nice heat of the, the habanero, which just plays so well with the pineapple. Oh, it's so, so good. Oh my God. So that is coconut shrimp with a slow roasted pineapple habanero salsa. And as always, if you like me, if you like this recipe, if you like the series, make sure you hit like and subscribe and you will be notified as soon as there's another Sweet Heat episode. And who knows what I'll be doing then. I probably am gonna be doing something with pork because even though I love shrimp and coconut, I'm feeling the need for some lard, but you know, stay tuned. <laughs> All right. You ready to chill out so I can finish my intro?